Well, Carl, thank you for um, taking the time. Uh, it's really good to, to have you here. Um, I guess, first of all, tell us about your football journey from, uh, from, from a child. Um, obviously, you grew up in, in rural, um, rural South Australia. Tell us about your journey. Um, yeah, it's, I, I caught little bits of that last um, presentation. Um, interesting one, I, I suppose I started playing soccer at the age of four. Um, and played, as you say, in Wyala up until I left Wyala, which was 17, 18. And from that age, I don't think, I, I don't recall ever being coached. When I grew up in Wyala, we, um, training was just always a game. Whoever turned up trained and we had a game. We picked two teams and we played. And I can't really, as I say, I can't really remember having any coaching until I suppose I sort of, started coming down to Adelaide when I was about 13 and try, um, going into sort of state training camps and stuff like that. And that was when I sort of started getting a little bit of coaching. So, um, yeah, I just loved the game, loved playing, always had a ball, always um, practising by myself, kicking it against the wall and, and doing that. And I think that's, you know, the main thing for, for kids is that they've got to be enjoying it and having fun and, and playing football. So is it not really structured, Carl? Was there is it small style games or just matter who? No, yeah, we yeah, it was pretty much turn up, pick two teams, and and play. Yeah, um, you know, I've had, um, I've got kids myself, and you know, sons that play football, and my youngest now is nine, and I watch his training sessions, and at times um, the coaches are coaches, and they want to coach. Uh, <laughs> And at times, you know, the kids get bored when someone's talking a lot. So, um, you know, my experience is best just to let the kids play and, and the kids that are struggling, then you go and speak to them and give them some one-on-one -on -one instruction and help them to, to improve. Um, in the end, we just need kids to be playing a lot more and less direction. So is that, is that one of the major differences between your sort of youth development and now? I would say so, yes. As I said, growing up in the country, um, and I suppose also being a country kid, I had a lot, I had access to a lot of other sports as well. It just wasn't um, soccer. I played every sport. That's what you do in the country. So um, that's what I did. And it gave me, I suppose, a, a good balance um, in the game that I loved. Carl, tell us about your transition from playing to coaching. Uh, was it um, uh, a long journey? Was it a quick Transition. Tell us about how you you transitioned. Um, yeah, look, as a as a player, um, you some players don't get don't enjoy the coaching part, and some players are um, are interested in you know the tactics and what happens in games. And I suppose I had that in me. I, I enjoyed the the tactical side of games and and paid attention to the coaches that I had through my career that taught me. Um, things. Um, so coming towards the end, I suppose um, about seven or eight years before I finished playing, I um, did some coaching courses. And um, so I, I did a lot of courses before I finished playing. When I finished playing, then I said, yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to coach. And at the time, I was more interested in developing and working with younger players than senior players. Um, so I, you know, from pl finishing playing, I at Adelaide United, I stepped on board and coached there for a couple of years, and mainly working with the younger players and the youth team players at the club. And then I've stepped away and worked for the um, football federation for a while, coaching um, in the pathway there for what was it about seven years, and now I'm back into the senior football. Oh, let me just fix uh, our camera. It looks like people can see us, which they don't want to see <laughs> our, uh, <laughs> our faces. Um, let me see. Uh, spotlight video. All right, hopefully that works. Um, so, Carl, tell us about the differences between, um, obviously, you mentioned that you did some um, uh, coaching with the Federation for a few years, and now you're with the, the senior squad at Adelaide United. Um, tell us about the differences in your coaching um, your coaching approach from the differences between juniors and seniors? 
Yeah, look, the main difference is um, you're coaching, when you're coaching um, young players, you're coaching them for tomorrow. You're not coaching them to, to win today. You're coaching them to always get better and challenge them to be better and, and improve their their level that they're at. Um, and now that I'm in professional um, football, it's yes, you're still challenging the players to be better, but you, now you also have a focus that you, you need to, to win. Um, and whereas with the younger players, it wasn't the fo- there wasn't a focus on winning. There was a focus more on, on making them better and making them to be competitive in them in themselves as well. Whereas now it's more about um, getting the result for the senior players, especially in this professional um, environment. Um, what impact does the does the Football SA and CC program have on our elite young players and like providing them the opportunity to become professional footballers in the future? Um, and if they're not in that program and they're in clubs, do they still have that sort of opportunity? Of course, of course. There's no, um, and this is the big thing, there's no, there's no proven pathway that's going to say, oh, if you do this, you do this, you do that, you're going to be a successful professional footballer. There's, there's just... Because if there was, there would be, you know, everyone would be down that path. Mm. Yes, if you're in a professional environment in clubs, um, you might have more chance of success. But if you're not, if you're in um, local clubs, you still have just as much chance to to succeed. Until, you know, at the end of the day, it will come from um, what drives you inside as an individual player to, to make it to the top. Yeah, uh, just on that. So, if anyone has any uh, any questions for Carl, um, feel free to uh, pop them in the comments. Um, Carl, tell us about your uh, your relationship, obviously, with the the Torre brothers. Um, how are they How are they going? And um, obviously, um, how how do they balance the um, the experience with with your A League squad and then the MPL squad as well? Yeah, um, yeah, we've got quite a few young players in the group. At the moment, um, you know, as you said, we've got young Muhammad, and there's uh, quite a few other young players that are training with our first team squad. So, because um, that's the, the way that you know, when I moved back into to be with Adelaide United, that was one of the main reasons that I wanted to come back on board. The club wants to promote young players and youth players, and that's, as I said, that's a a main focus of myself. I like to. Um, provide those opportunities and give those opportunities to the young players. And mm. the club has done that this year. We've brought in quite a few younger players and given them opportunities um, to, to, to play and, and not just, you know, short times and keep giving them opportunities to play and not, just not play. We've given quite a few that train alongside the first team as well. So um, I think at the moment we've got maybe – Seven, eight, nine of the youth t- um, team players training full time with the with the A League squad. What uh, what does the future hold, uh, Carl, for the for our national game? Um, do you see um, do you see the the curve on the up um, in terms of our youth development? Um, yeah, that's a difficult one. Sorry, sorry, that was a tricky question. Yeah. Um, Look, at the end of the day, we're doing, I, I think we've got a lot of people out there doing their best. Um, they're trying to do the best for the young players that are coming through and provide them with the opportunities to be successful. Um, but we're, we're sort of doing it with one hand tied behind our back. The, we just don't have enough resources um, to provide um, better environments for our players to um, make that jump from um, non-professional to professional football. Just not just um, young players, it's the um, other, you know, players, especially, um, you know, you've got players in that age group from 18 to 24 that need more opportunities to play and need opportunities to, to improve. And mm-hmm. that's the main thing. We just... We lack the resources and the opportunities for, for young players to to make that next step. Yeah. Uh, 
Paul Spalding, thank you for your question. Uh, Carl, do you think that our professional clubs, um, for example, Adelaide United, uh, should be starting junior academies and programs from a younger age like they do in Europe, uh, where kids are picked up by a professional club at eight to ten years old? Um, look, we, we don't have the resources to do that. The, the cost alone um, is prohibitive for A-League clubs to do that. Yes, there's certain A-League clubs already in Australia that can do that. But they have a far bigger budgets um, to manage those programs because it is a. If you're going to do, if you're a professional club and you're going to take these academies, then you you need to provide coaches that are professional and and provide the right pathways and the right instructions. Um, and as I said, we just don't have resources in. There's not in Australia, not just in Adelaide, that can provide those. Um, same resources that they do in Europe. Yeah, good answer. Um, from Stefan, how many hours per week or sessions do you feel is enough for juniors under 12 to 14s to maximise their potential? Um, look, I, I still believe up until, you know, 14, 15, that they still should maybe also have other activities outside of just football, not just focusing on football. Um, but if they're in a sort of a, an elite program, they need to be doing three to four sessions a week and then still have other ex exposures to other things outside of that. Um, for other kids, you know, there's, there's different levels. You know, some kids want to be professional footballers, some kids want to play just to be with their friends and, and some, you know, are in between. So it's about finding those levels that for each kid to provide them with a correct level for each each player. Uh, from Brian, uh, quite simply, uh, what would be the best advice you could give to a young aspiring coach? Um, yeah, it's always we, we talk about um, you know the young players about um, how they can get better, and, and for coaches, it's the same thing. You should always be reflecting on how you can get better. Have you had how you've delivered your session, what you could you do better, what would you do next time. Um, and it's all, of, as I say, it's more about letting the game be the teacher. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, another question from Will here, and uh, I'm not sure if you'll be able to answer this because it's um, across the country, but about the cost of the game and do we provide kids that are in low socioeconomic background the opportunity and if so, how do we, when we might be missing out on players, how do we get those into, into the sport? Are the scholarships available or how can we set these up? Yeah, that's, you know, going back on something I said earlier, the limited resources that we have in this, in this country to provide the right environments. Um, as you say, I, I believe the game is too expensive for um, the young players coming through. But everything... Um, I don't know if the clubs can actually do it any cheaper because everything costs money. You, you know, your training facilities, your your lights, your power, your water, everything all goes into that. And and once you start doing, uh, you know, three, four sessions a week, that's a lot of training that you've got to um, provide facilities for. It's, it's a difficult one. I think the governments maybe need to help a little bit more and provide more resources so we can bring down the price of... Um, having it for kids and as and that's the biggest inhibitive thing that we have in the game at the moment the cost of the game yeah yeah definitely uh another one from ken can you um uh, you mentioned before about letting the game be the teacher could you elaborate a bit more on on that for for ken and everyone listening yeah as i said um as, as a kid all you want to do if you you know, if you took seven or eight kids down to the park and you said, oh, what are we going to do? They, they will either want to shoot goals or they want to play a game. Mm. So that, for me, that's let them play a game. And if you're the coach and as, as they're playing, you can see um, stop the game maybe. And then you can see what deficiencies, whether they need to work on some passing, whether they need to work on their first touch or running with the ball. And then spend 10 minutes on working on one of those topics and then go back into the game 
I think that's the biggest thing. It, it, we spend too long um, providing too much instruction or we come up with um, drills where it's just quite complicated and it takes too long to explain or it takes, um, too, it's too difficult for the kids to, to do. So it's about finding that balance and let, let, letting them play and find their in, more enjoyment. Yeah, of course. Carl, how do you like football to be played? Um, well, it's, for me, I, I think it, I prefer it to be an attacking game. I like the game to be fairly free-flowing. And I'm not a big one on, um, especially, you know, in junior football, there sh it should be about the result, about defending. I, I, and you see that in the professional level. It's more, you see a lot of um, teams that play quite defensive. I, you know, I'd, I'd rather um, it be a bit more open and a bit more attacking. You know, you watch, um, you know, I suppose the team that's really doing ex exceptionally well at the moment, it's hard for me to say that, is Liverpool. But the football that they're playing is so open and, and so attacking, it's, it's enjoyable to watch. Mm. Yeah. Um, anybody else have any more uh, questions for Carl? Oh, excellent. Thank you, Brian. Right on time. Um, what's been your, your favourite coach that you've worked with or under and why? Good question. Um, it's difficult to say a, a favourite coach because, you know, there's... Um, a lot of the coaches that I've had, I've in, I've enjoyed. They've all, you know, I've taken things from all of them. Mm. But I'd have to say the main one that has had the, I suppose, the biggest influence on me as a as a player and maybe even a little bit as a coach is um, Zoran Matic. He was my, I suppose, the first real coach that I had that really um, explained things to me on how I can be better as a player and how the team needed to play more together to um, have success. Mm -hmm. I think there's a number, of, a number of coaches in local league or nationally now that have played under Zoromatic and they'll say the same thing. Is there what, what was so good about him and, and why have so many coaches come from, from under playing with him? Yeah, look, um, it was, I suppose, I, I say I learned the most under Zoran. We were very structured and very, um, he was very rigid in the way he wanted to play. And I suppose, in a way, that was his biggest flaw as well. Um, he didn't allow the, uh, players really to have that freedom um, to really express themselves. So, but on the flip side, he had, you know, he, he taught discipline and and tactically, he was quite good as well. So, and you know, to be successful as a footballer, you need to have discipline. Mm. Is it, uh, obviously, we're in a very fast-moving world in terms of technology and and data. Um, you know, you, your softwares like Huddle, etc. To to what extent do you think um, a junior coach should be using those tools? And give us an insight into how you use these tools at the professional level as well um yeah look it, um video is is great but uh, you know at junior level it becomes quite difficult you know and and cost it's a cost again to film games um and to to really get the true value of a video of a game it has to be at a height where you can actually see above and see, get good um, vision from the game otherwise if it's at ground level or not or just a little bit elevated it's not really good enough to really develop as a coach you know and, and see the, the movements of the players mm -hmm. um, so that's the main thing that's a cost inhibited for the players you know when I was coaching at the NTC we in the youth we always we filmed all the games and it was made available for all the players to watch the games because that's another big um, thing that I I believe in Australia that w that we lack is um, our football knowledge as players coming through. They just don't watch enough football. Um, they don't watch themselves enough to improve better, to get better. Um, and that's how you develop your football knowledge by watching football, watching um, 
good games. See how um, the best players go about. How do they play? How what do they do when they make a mistake? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a big thing that we lack in this country of um, players actually watching young players of watching high level football. Mm-hmm. Um, and at a senior level, at um, the A League level, yes, we train. We try. We video a lot of our training sessions and, and review what we've done at training um, as coaches, firstly, um, and implement, and then change what has worked well and what's not working well. And we show a lot of that stuff to the to the playing group. Um, and then all, uh, all of our games get filmed, and we have different angles to to see the games, and a lot of that gets um, fed fed back to the playing group. Very good. Um, finally, a couple of more questions. There's one from Ken in regards to which books or um, can you rec- recommend for coaches? Um, any coaching, coaching material and things like that? Yeah, look, I suppose the federations um, have put out a lot of those books that are quite good. Um, but again, you know, there's no, there's no coaching, you know, you, you, you can buy many books with coaching sessions in it and that, but has no real effect on, on the pl- players that you're coaching. You need to find what what's lacking from your players and and adjust sessions that are going to suit your players. There's no point taking just copying sessions that you can find millions of them on the internet. It's about finding what's best for, for the playing group that you've got. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then, you know, on other books on reading, yes. Again, it's about developing your football knowledge. It's not, um, keep reading. There's, there's lots of um, knowledge out there. You just got to yeah find what you're interested in. And, and yeah, um, yeah. Uh, at an A League level, do you have like mentors or do you have um, coaching sessions with the other A League coaches? Or can you give us an insight into into that and how that works? Um, no, look, I, I suppose. You, over your um, course of your career of coaching, you develop networks um, with other coaches and you have um, discussions with those coaches in your networks on, on what, um, what you've done at training, what's worked for you in, in tactical senses in games and that, that's about, that about it. It's just about your own sort of network. Um, I've gone through and done all the, the coaching courses. So I've, you know, as I said to you, I, I think my first coaching course was the in the old senior license back in, I reckon it was in 2000, and then I did the state license, and then from that I went on and, and did my B license, A license, and my pro license, and just along those um, courses, you you develop a, a big network of coaches. And just lastly, from um, from us, Carl, um, what does the future hold for for yourself? Um, can you see yourself um, coaching an A League club, going back overseas? What what do you see the future for yourself? Yeah, look, I'm in a position now that I've um, really enjoying working um, alongside a coach that I'm learning a lot from, mm. um, and. Who knows what's going to, to happen from here? You know, yes, um, I'd love to um, be an A-League coach, but um, it has to be at the right time and in the right environment um, for myself to, that I, I think is best for myself. Um, but at the moment, I'm really enjoying the position that I have at the moment with Adelaide United, um, working closely with other coaches and, and just learning every day. Excellent stuff. All right, well, Carl, thank you um, very much for your time. I know it's a quite a difficult um, period for the game at the moment, so I really appreciate you you um, making the time for us and yeah, on behalf of all the coaches that are online. Thank you. Yeah, thanks very much, Carl. Thank you. All right, thank you very much.